This week on Soundwaves TV, the gang is going to be your musical travel agents, if you will. We're going to take you beyond the bay. This week, all the incredible music on this week's show is from everywhere but the Bay Area. We'll also welcome singer-songwriter Tamar Burke back to the show, and we'll mass debate the countless rock biopics currently in production. This is Soundwaves TV. You're watching Soundwaves TV. Chasta Dennison, Steve, and cheers. Cheers. You're going to drink this poor chest and dumps it on me. I, I know. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> That happened weird. during the theme. We had a big, we'll have to show you the clip of how that, yeah. uh, how that all happened. Yeah, we were rolling for that. I'm sure that will pop sploosh. up. <laughs> and not in a good way either. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for sploosh. <laughs> Oh my God. That's when it's the right. best. There are so many comments. God, so we, many responses. We so often derail in the first 10 seconds. Yeah, we of the haven't show. even we haven't said we even said sound waves I yet. I know. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Soundwaves. Hey, TV. how you doing, everybody? Hey, here we are. All right, so we're talking about other music scenes today yes, a little bit, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm speaking with Tamar Burke. You guys have mm -hmm. seen her on Soundwaves before. She lives in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And Dennis noticed something. We were playing a lot of cool videos and we realized those are all from San Diego. There's something happening San there. San Diego, so there's something in the water. It, it's, and you know what? That's why we do these Beyond the Bay shows occasionally because every now and again you see a scene jump up. You mm -hmm. see Austin where it's like, wow, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out of Austin. Yeah. Or Nashville or New York. Brooklyn has had a lot of really cool oh, stuff yeah. going on. Atlanta. Atlanta, mm -hmm. right. And now San Diego. And I'm like, that is the magic of what this is, what we do, how we kind of, you know, cast our gaze out. Because, yeah, we're Bay Area music and the Bay Area music scene, we know how awesome that is. But when you actually stop and go, What's happening over there? You go, whoa, that's some pretty cool stuff, too. Yeah. You know? And it is cool when something pops up. Because, yeah, you expect Nashville, mm -hmm. New York. You expect, expect places like that to have a vibrant music yeah. scene for things to happen. But San Diego, you just as a beach. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. Yeah. So, so, when, <laughs> right. so when a music scene pops up like a, like a little brush fire that just kind of like yeah. sparks to life over here and gets your attention, right. that's great. It is. Mm -hmm. And we love being able to, to pinpoint that and go, that is some awesome music right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's funny because we talked about New Orleans on one episode and mm -hmm. that that place is always popping off. But maybe it's a different kind of scene, right? Because mm -hmm. it's never mm -hmm. it's never not popping off. It's such an yeah, epicenter, yeah. though, with all of the yeah. that walking distance and those clubs. And yes. those musicians. It's just everything kind of flows into the same. Which we've talked about before, right. too. That's one thing that uh, we struggle with in San Francisco or is our true. geography yeah. and yeah. the bridges that separate us. But that's why Soundwaves TV is here that's to right. bind everything together. North North Bay doesn't know what East Bay's got going That's on. That's right. No, Until you know, we tell them. South Bay's a whole different world, you know, and San Francisco ain't helping with all those, you know, new condos. That's, yeah. You know, so you need Preach. something. Preach. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was me it's, getting a little political. No, there. no, no. It's Don't true. make me get the squirt bottle. <laughs> You, you missed it. You had to be here. But. Yeah. Yeah. Inside yeah. joke. But that's, that's yeah. another great He's on fire today, everybody. He's on fire. So All right. uh, we got some great stuff. And, and artists you probably aren't familiar with if you are predominantly following uh, this scene. And uh, we mm -hmm. want to introduce you to him because there's a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. So uh, Dead Posey is mm -hmm. a band that I fell in love with at Aftershock Festival. Mm. Um, they were playing there, I don't know, three or four years ago. And I got to interview them. And as soon as I did, uh, the girl in Dead Posey and I just connected. She's into Edgar Allan Poe and all the dark things that ah, your resident Morticia, Morticia right, is yeah, into, things, yeah. right? Yeah. So Dead Posey quickly became uh, one of my favorite bands. So I thought, you know what? We should play them on Soundwaves. We should. They've been on fire recently. So their latest is Can't Take Me Down. You're watching Dead Posey here on Soundwaves TV. And cheers. Cheers.
I absolutely adore those guys. That was Dead Posey. You're watching Soundwaves TV. Coming up, we've got lots going on with our Beyond the Bay show. We have the Von Tramps out of Minneapolis. We're going to travel to my old hood, Oklahoma, for a band called Sports. We're going to talk to Tamar Burke out of the very poppin' San Diego scene. I'm going to interview her about her latest album. And we're going to have our mass debate about all the music biopics or as Joe Hawk likes to call them, biopics. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> we got to give him crap. He always tells us he's the youngest one here. So, you know, we got to slap him around just a little bit. But first, let's get over to our dear Giselle with our power pick of the week. Giselle? Hey, Sound Wavers. I think that's going to be the official name for Sound Waves groupies or fans. I'm the content producer, Giselle Fernandez. If you're wondering who's in charge of the social media, who's doing the ticket giveaways, well, that is me. One of my favorite episodes to see on Sound Waves TV is Beyond the Bay because we get to look outside the Bay Area, look at different cities, different states, and check out their local music scene as well. Well, my power pick of the week is a band from San Diego. They go by Glass Spells. They're a very disco goth band. And once you watch this video, Confessions, you're going to want to dance to it. So here's the power pick of the week. Glass Spells with their video Confessions on Soundwaves TV.
like to be considered for airplay on either Soundwaves FM on 1077 The Bone or right here on Soundwaves TV, go to 1077thebone.com slash soundwaves. It's kind of like back in the day, scamming your way into a radio station with your demo tape, but never actually having to leave the house. You guys are crazy, man. This portion of Soundwaves TV is sponsored by Longboard, the coolest hidden gem on the coast. A world-class music venue with a neighborhood vibe. Stop by for a drink or check out an awesome show. For more information or to get tickets to an upcoming event, go to thelongboardbar.com.
Thanks so much for watching Soundwaves TV. I am thrilled to have on the beautiful and talented Tamar Burke again to Soundwaves. Yay! Hello, my dear. It's so Hello. good to see you. You oh, too. I just adore you. It's been, I think, almost uh, two years since we spoke last and a Wait, lot man, has happened. A lot has happened. Yes. yes. I, I don't even know. I, I, I feel like it was only a year, it, but it feels like two because so much has happened. Well, yeah. it was because COVID was a time warp. And I know yes. I know the last time we spoke on camera here, it was inside of COVID. And so COVID just feels like a vortex to me, like the lockdown was a vortex to me. <laughs> So time is like, I don't know. We just make up time around here, but it's been far too long. I will say that. Yes, and I'm, yes. I am, I'm just in love with this new album. And, oh, and I've said this before on Soundwaves. One of my favorite parts of doing my job is getting surprise little links to tracks before they're released. So I can feel special. <laughs> so yes. thank you for that. Yeah. 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 And I took it on a drive down the coast and Oh my God, Tamar, it makes the most perfect coastal driving music ever. Yes. It Yay. is so, oh, it's so dreamy. That's like oh. the word that kept coming to my brain was dreamy. I mean, oh, good. you're a singer songwriter, um, but I, I don't know which you do better. It's hard to choose. Your songwriting skills are just so incredible. Oh, and I know that this album specifically um, comes from a, vulnerable place is vulnerable the right word to use there yes yes, yeah. yes um talk about how this album came to be sure sure so um i was kind of getting inspired after people really liked my first record so i was like okay i'll just start t tinkering in the studio yeah. and i had a little sketch for the first single your permission and um it was a one minute sketch and I kind of was like, blew it out into a full song. I was like, ah, oh, this is really, I'm digging this song. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna just start in a very relaxed way, start writing new songs. And then something really awful happened that my dad became sick. And I called my mom and I'm like, I have a very bad feeling, mom. She's like, what do you mean? You know, cause my dad always gets better. They're, right. They're, he's of such a strong person. And she was like, what do you mean? I'm like, mom, I'm like freaking out right now. I'm going to take a red eye to Florida. And she's like, are you crazy? He just has a cold. I'm like, mom, he's not responding to my text. He always wants to talk to me. We talk every day. Yeah. I just, my whole body was sort of in a panic mode. Oof. By the time I got to Florida, I, I took a red eye on Saturday. By the time I got to Florida on Sunday morning, he had was already in the hospital. And then a week later he died. When that happened, everything stopped. My whole life, my whole brain, my whole, everything stopped. And I know we, we just talked about that because you have, have also lost your father. And it's a very specific thing with a daughter and father. It, it It's like you, your rock of your world that yeah. tells you how everything should be. <laughs> kind of your and, North Star like a guiding light kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, I yes. And I was very lost and yeah. very depressed. And I think when I came back, I think the only thing I could do was go into the studio. And I wasn't like even thinking about doing another record so quickly, but like so much was coming out and so much dark. There's there a lot of dark things that were coming out, but I also felt like um, this is sort of healing me. I, I feel mm -hmm. bad for my family. I was escaping quite a bit into the studio. Yeah. Um, but they were so understanding. You were coping. I think I was. And yeah. and if I if I wasn't doing that, I would just like everything reminded me of my dad. Like yeah. I was mourning like seriously, like everything. And so I was constantly like would burst out in tears in the most weird times. So being in the studio gave me a bit of a focus. And then I sort of became almost obsessive compulsive about finishing it. And that roller coaster of emotions will change over time. I lost my father um, years ago in 2006, he passed away, um, you know, and, and I'm, it's still so heartbreaking and sometimes it will just wash over you. So I won't sit here and tell you that it, it just always gets better and better. And you, you don't, I mean, you don't, time doesn't necessarily separate your emotion or at least it hasn't for me writing. I'm not a songwriter obviously, but, um, you know, when my dad passed away, the only thing I could write was write. I mean, I, I would, could do is write. I just wrote in a journal constantly just to get it out because yes, I yes. personally believe, and I have a feeling you might agree is that if you don't get that stuff out, it can make you ill. It can really eat you up inside. 
Yes, yes. And I I was um, very anxious all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just starting to take a deep breath. I feel like I'm just starting to breathe. Part of it is the weather's getting better. Yeah. The school year's almost ending because that was another thing I went back to work. Mm. And um, I don't recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I didn't really have a choice because I'm a teacher. Right. So right. there's such a shortage of substitutes that like I just, and I also thought that I think a lot of people think that it'll help me get my mind off of stuff. Distraction but and yeah. But I think it, and, and that's not that that's not true, mm -hmm. but what happens is you're holding yourself together for like that, that daytime and then right. you come home and you're just a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I so get you know? that. I've so been there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this, but this album I'm super proud of, and there's a couple of my favorite tracks on it. I was very, very nervous about putting it out though. It's just an artist, like total paranoia and um, but I knew there's good songs on it. Like they're not going to hate it. <laughs> no, no. It's, I mean, it comes, it's different because it comes from a different place. It's a different chapter, even a year apart. It's a different, different chapter of your life. Um, but it's so relatable. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but my favorite song is sweet relief. Like I'm obsessed with that song. I love yes. it. The guitar yeah. in it is so beautiful. The lyrics, I mean, all the lyrics to all these songs are so great. Um, yeah. And you've done a couple of really cool videos. I do have to ask you, you did a video. I think it was for, it was for uh, tragic endings. Yes. And it was the roller coaster. Yes. How did you film that? Did you just, oh. did you hold your phone or did you attach your phone to the front of a roller coaster? Like what, how did you do that? I, okay. I, I had this random, this is kind of how I work. I get these random crazy ideas at the weirdest times. And it was like some, it was one of my vacations and I'm like, tragic endings. I need to show like something that I hate to do uh -huh. <laughs> and something that I could die doing. Right. And I, you know, so I'm like, okay, wait, there's like a roller coaster at Belmont Park here. And I, it was the middle of the day and I checked, it was open. Uh-huh had nobody to go with. So I'm like, yeah. okay, how am I going to do this? So I go there and I pay for, you know, a round of tickets. Okay. Cause you have to, I couldn't just do it one time because who knows if I was going to like, of my course. phone is going to fly out of my head. Right. Can I get this in one take? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like in line, this guy's looking at me very strangely because I'm, <laughs> before it goes off, I'm like holding it and like trying to, <laughs> and then I'm like terrified that I'm going to, my phone's going to fly out of my hand. Of course. So I'm, gripping it gripping it and going and i had to go on like five or six times and when when each ride would end my hand was numb because i, was <laughs> I think i would probably duct tape my phone to my hand so that i wouldn't have I to work on that <laughs> and then rip that. off all your arm hair trying to get your uh, phone off of your hand. No, yes. you've done some incredible videos. And you know what I have to say, Tamara? Like, obviously, we're focused on you and your amazing music, but we noticed something on Soundwaves. We have been playing a lot of great music that all of a sudden it dawned on us is coming out of San Diego. Like a oh. lot of videos that were like, oh, that video, oh, that's from San Diego. Oh, that band's from San Diego. Is the San Diego music scene like popping off? I mean, a lot of what we play here on Soundwaves is usually from the San Francisco Bay Area, but we do like to cover the West Coast and beyond the Bay, as we call it. And yeah, you're one yeah. of our artists that we focus on. But how is the San Diego music scene? I mean, I, I've i only been here since 2018, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's really rich. And yeah. it's rich in a very diverse way. That's great. Um, the the teen scene i hate using those terms but is massive and bringing up the teen scene i know you wanted to ask about tuesday my kid yes your um, kid has an amazing band that we've played here on sound waves I and know, the please. inflorescence of course yes the, the last time we talked we talked about tuesday getting into music and kind of doing the dang thing and now really kicking ass like coming full yes, circle sir. they got signed actually <laughs> I they mean, are, how does that make you feel? Are you so beaming with pride? Like, wow, how cool. I am. I am. Mother and because, child doing it. Like, that's so neat. Yes. And also because the record label Kill Rock Stars is one of the coolest record labels, independent still out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, releasing, you know, a Bikini Kill, Elliot Smith, mm -hmm. you know, Bratmobile, all of these great artists. And, and so... Um, they loved the music and um, 
their records coming out in June. We just yes. love the mother child relationship. It's, I mean, you're the first and only that I can think of that we have known uh, where we have, you know, an artist that we're invested in. And then all of a sudden their child comes along and bamo, here's a band that's also totally badass and that yes. we want to support. So it's a really, it's a really cool thing. It's special and different. So, yeah. And I was never writing songs so well at her age. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I'm 17. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Tuesday's been growing up in a house when, you know, me and my husband have been in bands since we met. That's how we yeah. met. Yeah. And I think we talked about that because of your husband, too. Right. And um, Tuesday's been hearing our music in our little studio, dancing to our little songs, <laughs> on, you know, for since she was five. Yeah, she was amazing. one of the youngest kids to be accepted into the School of Rock Summer Program. And she was playing drums first. So Tuesday is a, a musician at heart. And, you know, who knows what? what she'll decide to do with her life. I think that she'll always write songs though. I, I just, yeah. you know, well, it's in her blood quite, yeah. quite literally, you know, I mean, I, I, I wish them nothing but the best and any Thank way you. we can support, you know, that we'll, we are always here to do so. I know so. I will, I will send you their stuff for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, make sure that uh, everyone knows where to find you online. Where do you hang out most on social? I try everything. I'm on Twitter. It's just Tamar Burke. I'm on Facebook, Tamar Burke Music. I'm on Instagram, Tamar Burke Music. I'm on TikTok, Tamar Burke Music. But Bandcamp is where you can buy. Um, and I wanted to show you, I've got two vinyl. I want to make sure I buy the vinyl. I Oh, you've got two different. Okay, I love it. Yep, these are the vinyl. And then I also, for those who are still doing CDs. Oh, look at you. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Some people do prefer CDs and I prefer, well, I love vinyl, but I prefer just to have it in my, in my hand. Yes, you know? me too. Me too. Um, I, I interviewed uh, Tony Molson. He's a friend here on Sign Waves. He's in like 400 bands, but he was talking in one of our debates about that idea about like actual music in your hand, because in 30 years, when something else is taken over streaming or MP3s or whatever, you'll still have that piece of vinyl in your hand, yes, yes. you know, or your kids will, or whoever you've passed yeah. it along to after you're dead and gone. <laughs> I know, and CDs are actually making a big comeback. Yeah. And some collectors have never stopped. So these, these, I, I never thought I would make CDs, but they actually sound so great. So yeah. um, my band camp page is where you can buy the physical copies, okay. uh, but I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple Music, I'm on all of the, the streaming channels too. So um, come and meet me, come and find me. I'm really interactive with people who, um, you know, leave comments and, and leave comments about the music or buy music. I love meeting people that are liking my songs and music. It really means so much to me, really. Well, we do encourage our viewers to, of course, stream, but more importantly, to really yes. support in in physical ways uh, and not just, you know, the merch and all that. But go out to shows when you find these artists on Soundwaves, go out and visit them and see them, especially now that we can yes. at local shows. I am so proud of you, Tamar. And I just have to say on a personal level, thank you for such a beautiful album. I, I'm thank sorry you. about sort of part of the reason it came to be or how it came to be, but my God, did you make something so beautiful out of something oh, so hard for you? Thank so, you so much. That's turning turning that into a, a treasure for other people to have forever is a beautiful thing. So hopefully that makes your heart yeah. feel a little bit better about it. It does. It, it's, it's everything, really. That's the point. Thank oh. you. Well, we love you tomorrow. Let's, uh, let's see some of your music. What do you think? Yes. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. It's, it's Tamar Burke. You're watching Soundwaves TV. We'll be right back. Think no one is being 
check out Soundwaves TV on all our social media accounts. Deleted scenes, extended interviews, the latest announcements, and official playlists. The Bay Area plays here. Hit us up everywhere at Soundwaves TV. Closed captioning for Soundwaves TV is brought to you by Green Room Music Center, offering rock camp, music lessons, a drum shop, and rehearsal spaces for rent. For more information, go to greenroommusiccenter.com. guys well it's time for another mass debate and uh you know i came up with this one because i've noticed that it's a new trend going on right now that there's a lot of music based biopics i had to make sure i said that right because dennis would kick my ass if i said biopic he went to the doctor and got a went, biopic went, yeah i went to the doctor and got a biopic i wasn't able to sit down for two days after doing my biopic <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's been a increased trend that we've seen a lot of biopics come out. You know, recently it's been announced that the Sex Pistols are getting one over on FX for Hulu. Uh, Pam and Tommy came out yeah. uh, a little bit before that. Of course, you know, uh, one of the biggest ones that, in, in my opinion, really started the trend was Bohemian Rhapsody. Sure. Uh, what I really want to talk about is who do you think deserves one? Mm. Well, I loved Bohemian Rhapsody, as I know our dear friend Dennis Willis <laughs> did as well. <laughs> it was his favorite movie. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to be honest, I kind of love because I'm a geek when it comes to music. Yeah. Trivia. I don't like trivia games, but I like to learn. <laughs> oh, oh, we know that. I like to learn <laughs> trivia and, and dive deep. So I do love biopics of all kinds of everything. Mm -hmm. um, some are done better than others. You were mentioning off camera Weird Al was in this. And I was oh, like, yeah. So oh, yeah. another one. Weird Al Yankovic with Daniel Radcliffe, Mr. Harry Potter but himself. why is my question? First of all, why the fuck not? Why? All right, exactly. I'm exactly. sorry. I, I am yep. a 90s kid here. I was a huge fan of Weird Al. I love Al. how you always love to bring your age up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you old assholes. You old know, assholes. Here. No, Weird, Weird Al is always a what the fuck at any age. At any age. Oh, it doesn't ow. matter, right? Ow. Right? Come on. Shots have been <laughs> the opinions posted by Chast on the show are not necessarily reflected by the producers. <laughs> Please send all inquiries to get your shit together. No, no. All right, all right, no. No, but uh, yeah, it's one of those, like, it is a WTF, like, why Weird Al? But, yeah. I, but like, who do you think really, I'm sure you probably would say Janis Joplin. Uh, well, I've wanted, and Janis got really close. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, oh, we, a number of times. A number of yeah. times yeah. it was really close, and I was excited for it, depending Asterisk, mm -hmm. depending on, on who was going to play Janice. Mm -hmm. And and I've done the Broadway Janice, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's my number one that I want to see if it's done well. See, here's the thing. Um, I've really gotten into watching a lot more documentaries. And mm -hmm. since I've done that, and the same thing with reading autobiographies, I don't want to read somebody else's biography about a band. I want to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. Same thing kind of goes here. If you're doing a biopic of any type, okay, let's say it's some scientist in the 1940s that I don't know about. You can cast somebody and I'll go, I'll take that leap. But when you've got somebody who's so indelible as a rock or entertainment figure of the past 40 years. And still living. And still living in a lot <laughs> yeah. of cases. you got to get that casting right. you yep. got to get that writing right. It's not just going to the Wikipedia page and filling the whole fucking thing up with facts that didn't happen when they did Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Told you but, you loved it. But, but I will say... Bohemian Rhapsody, billion dollars at the box office, mm -hmm. huge soundtrack, and now there's this rush to make all this stuff. There's a business here, mm -hmm. but it's got to be done, like you said, for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. If the casting's off, like that David Bowie movie a couple of years ago, didn't get the mm -hmm. rights to David Bowie's music. The Billy Joel one they're making, Piano Man, right. isn't going to get the rights to Billy Joel's music. Why do I give a shit about either one of those? I agree. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, But then again, there's this Elvis movie coming out, directed by Baz Luhrmann, and I'm oh, like, the yes, big, that, splashy, yeah. crazy, awesome, doesn't look like Elvis. And like, that's the deal breaker for me right there. As I'm looking at that guy going, there is nothing about that guy that says Elvis to me, but everything mm -hmm. else looks great. Really? I cried when I saw that trailer. It was a great trailer. Oh my yeah. God. It was a great trailer. If you call it Hector, it's great. If you, you call, call it, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm on board to find out what happens with a Hector guy, but that's not Elvis. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. Well, we don't even need to continue. We're not gonna talk. Uh, Good night, everybody. <laughs> Drop. Hector, oh my God, that's so uh, funny. But all things considered, like, uh, you know, it, I, yeah, I agree. He doesn't look like Elvis. He does have the mannerisms of mm -hmm. Elvis. He sounds like Elvis. And it does look like a great... Uh, a great yeah, film overall, fun. yeah. But like, it, it'll always be do, Hector to me now. Yeah, always, <laughs> you ruined it for me. You see Hector in theaters this summer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like even 100 percent spot on, looking like 
the artist in question, I, I, it's it, not going to bug me. As long as the story is pretty true, especially, you know, I love the fact that the band Queen did collaborate on Bohemian Rhapsody. That's the one thing I like about it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I do agree with you that if a biopic does not have the rights to the music, then why is it even worth making? Right. And right. I think you made a good point, too, about who's on board. You know, morally, I have an issue with, like, a Skinner as a perfect example of this. Uh, mm, yes. Where some members and their families are on board, mm-hmm. some members and their families are absolutely right. not well, and will <laughs> go to mm-hmm. court over it that's and fight over it. That's also a problem when you have, like, 20 members. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, a Skinner exclusive <laughs> yeah, problem. Yeah. But, you know, there that's a very, um, God, I mean, such a sad story mm-hmm. and digs up a whole lot for a whole lot of families. And so I would feel sort of morally conflicted watching a movie where all the families of those artists especially who have passed on were not on board it now, just feels weird mm-hmm. now this also brings up a question do biopics need to be like the whole origin story or do you think there should be like a specific time in a mm. band's like for me i would love to see a biopic with acdc once bon scott unfortunately passed away and the trials and tribulations of figuring out who's going to take up that mantle Yes, if it's a story about ACDC rising from the ashes, then mm-hmm. Bon Scott dies at the end of Act Two. Mm-hmm. If it's a story about Bon Scott, you know, doing some amazing thing and coming from adversity, then we fade out on a victorious moment, Thelma and Louise drive into the canyon, and then you say, but he died on whatever. Same thing with the way they handled mm-hmm. Freddie Mercury. Mm-hmm. That's just, that's the central question when you're talking about when to set a biopic. We're going to make a movie about this, David Bowie. Well, what part of that 50 years are you going to cover? Right. Yeah. Because I think if you're doing your job right, you're going to find like the most impactful from here to here is the story that really needs to be told, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe that's what they're going to do with the Billy Joel movie. But without the music, it's hard. You know what I mean? Well, I think mm-hmm. we, between the music and the scale of mm-hmm. the of the personality, I think that's a big part of it as well. Yeah. Because when you look at Queen and Freddie Mercury, I mean that's a that's a big music video kind of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the same thing with Hector. You know, I mean he's got that <laughs> he's got that incredible history, but he's got that personality that goes across there. You know? But there are but there are individuals like Janis Joplin, or for yeah. me in, in particular, like Jim Croce. Mm-hmm. You know, a great mm-hmm. storyteller, but he's you know just this this cool guy that told great stories and all that sort of tragically died in a plane crash. I mean, there are some some great elements there, but he's not a big flashy character. Right, right. Uh, Carol King is another, mm-hmm. you know, and then mm-hmm. she's got her Broadway show right. that talks about her history. I wouldn't mind seeing that on the big screen, but mm-hmm. I don't know that Hollywood is going to look at that and go, yeah, we can make that's a billion a dollars mm-hmm. off of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and, and that's part of the problem as well. Well, you do need those really dramatic points yeah, in like right. like you can't do a Skinner biopic without the plane crash. Right. You can't do an ACDC story without the death of mm-hmm, Bond mm-hmm. because the story's not there. Those are those pre that moment and post that moment sure. moments. You Does bet. that make sense? Totally, you know no, where totally, everything totally. That's changes. why you make the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So, you know, if you don't have everybody on board to tell that part of that story, I don't see the point. But then you dance around the the, the, the timeline like they did in mm-hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody mm-hmm. as far as when Freddie Mercury got AIDS and And that when bothered that fa- me. The, the, and we, that even bothered you. I mean, cause, yeah. cause and I liked it. But and I enjoyed them because it was that's the thing. It's a big, fun, splashy movie and great music. Mm, and and yeah. the way it was directed, like a music video and all right. that sort of stuff. The facts are kind of like, yeah, you know, we can kind of shuffle those around a little bit just yeah. to make mm-hmm. good storytelling. And that's the difference. If you're telling a story, if you're writing a, a, a script about a, let's say, Stillwater. Oh, you know, yes. for almost famous, you know, you're creating a band, you're creating that history. You can tell whatever story you want. Right. When you're telling a story about Queen. Tell the goddamn story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no reason. You know, you should be a good enough writer right. and a good enough director to be able to take that material and make a story based on that mm-hmm. and not have to shuffle things around. But in the fit. case of Queen, I think that's a perfect example is that they wanted, the band wanted the PG-13 they did. billion dollar sellable right. version, right. not the gritty R-rated HBO Max version. They wanted everybody to watch So it like, what's the intent of making the movie? Are we making the movie to celebrate this life and sell soundtracks? <laughs> Does the estate sign off on these songs so they can sell soundtracks? Mm -hmm. Those are questions that the general public doesn't ask, but when we're considering this conversation, it kind of all begins with that, which is Mm -hmm. kind of like greed. Yeah, You know what I mean? It's like, let's start from a place of where we can make the most money. Oh, the clean version? Cut out the orgies. Oh, the clean version? Mm -hmm. Cut out the F-bombs. Let's make it a big, splashy, fun thing. Look, Bohemian Rhapsody was a vastly entertaining film. Yes. I told when it came out, I said, I'm going to watch this movie for the next 30 years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be mad at it for 30 years, <laughs> but I will be no less entertained. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if whoever's selling the rights, is, if, if they get it all right, yeah. if it works, you've got something that's entertaining, makes a lot of money, sells a bunch of soundtracks, 
history and story be damned. Yeah. Well, I think the director gets a, gets a fair shot mm-hmm. shot at it too because if uh, David Lynch was directing the Hector story, <laughs> it's going to be a lot. That. It, I would yeah, watch I, that. I, I yeah. would. I would. But when you've got Baz Luhrmann mm-hmm. doing right. it, right. I expect, you know, like uh, uh, Moulin Rouge, you know, right. I, ex- I expect yeah. this big grand right. fun. So I, I, I almost, I almost can give him a little bit of. No, I, I got in the trailer. No, yeah. totally. I, yeah. No, it's definitely a Baz Luhrmann film. There's no two ways about <laughs> yeah. it. You know? I prefer the ones that are really dirty, like the Motley Crue, the dirt. Right. And I want a yeah. real I Aussie my, bio. I have my opinions about the dirt, though. It, it could have been more than just one film. It, mm. I, in my opinion, mm. the storytelling was just, there wasn't enough storytelling, in my opinion. I feel like they could have spaced it out. Which I can also go into this like, like a series. all. Yeah, I can also do this like with a bunch of the MCU movies right now. But uh, I feel like it could have been maybe a three part miniseries. Well, no, that's thing. another point is because mm-hmm. like as 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 recently as five six years ago, we're talking about making a two hour movie. Now you can do something for streaming, and it's a miniseries like yeah. Pam and Tommy. Like Pam and yeah. Tommy, yeah. exactly. You could have four one hour chunks, and you can tell your story in a different way, yeah, yeah. in a more dynamic way. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. All I know is that when the Weird Al Yankovic biopic comes out, I know it's going to be for the right reason. We're taking to, Chasta. To, to, to <laughs> tell, I actually know because I believe it's going to be on Roku. Uh, it is. Oh, oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's with Roku. I so. love Roku, but I'm a <laughs> I really thought it was a Saturday Night Live skit when I when I heard Me that. Me too. You know, <laughs> oh, that's, nope, that's going to be hilarious. For, not Daniel Radcliffe. I was today yep. like years him. old when I realized that yep. wasn't an SNL That's going to be funny for three minutes. That's going to be great. <laughs> oh, it's oh, it's a movie? Right? So you'll be going on a solo date on that one. That is fine. I do a lot of stuff solo anyway. Especially when I masturbate. And that's that, your that, masturbate. That's bringing it home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bringing it home, baby.
You want to watch Soundwaves TV on your big screen? Head over to the Roku Channel Store and download our free app, Soundwaves TV. You'll get every brand new episode and archives of every past season. Do it now. We've got your next party covered. This portion of Soundwaves TV is sponsored by Longboard, the coolest hidden gem on the coast. A world-class music venue with a neighborhood vibe. Stop by for a drink or check out an awesome show. For more information, go to longboardbar.com.
we're back. Thank you very much. Some awesome Beyond the Bay acts oh, there. Yeah. I mean, I just love these different scenes and these, and just, go, I, I'm kind of like, you know what? I could put on the music that I like, but I love the discovery. Mm-hmm. I love hearing a new sound and go, whoa, who's that? That's Where's that awesome. from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm one of those guys that really, I've got my comfort food music yeah. that I like to listen to a lot. Yeah. And, and a show like this, it gives me the opportunity to find out about what's mm-hmm. going on out there. And yeah, you get some some new favorites by by listening to this sort of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And another thing that Soundwaves is, uh, has become known for over the past handful of years is our live performances. When we do Soundwaves Christmas or we have somebody come into the studio here and do a little something, that's great because mm-hmm. we're all big fans of live music. We love being face to face with musicians and, and having that experience. So we're doing a show next week called Live Baby Live. And it is live performances that we've featured here on Soundwaves, uh, videos that we've got from other bands that have been performing at venues around the Bay Area. There is some great stuff coming up on that episode. You're definitely going to want to check that out. Can I just say that's one of my favorite things about doing this show is when we have our own private performances mm-hmm. because you guys see it on the TV show, but behind the scenes, the three of us are standing two feet yes. from some of our favorite mm-hmm. rock yeah. stars. The Sam best. Chase, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and we get this private moment. It's yeah. just, it, I, I've been brought to tears, surprise, surprise, yeah, uh, several that's times. That's true. So I'm super excited about yep. this episode. It's going to mm-hmm. be awesome. Also, we're going to have a mass debate on that episode um, about backing tracks. Should they be used in music, specifically rock and roll, or should they not? About a month ago, there was some drama that went down. We'll fill you in on the drama, and then we'll mass debate it. We shall. We shall. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Find Cheers. some new music. Cheers, guys. Love Cheers. You. Cheers. Mom. <laughs>